Good afternoon, it's Wednesday, it's hump day. Yeah. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Nice Wednesday. And today we're gonna to talk about ankles and how ankles affect the foot and how ankles affect the knee and also actually the hip. Ankles make a, a pretty big difference in how we move and how we have stability through our, our feet. And we kind of look at the bike and we have three different points of contact. We have our butt, we have our hands, and we have our feet. And so if our feet aren't, and our, if our ankles aren't helping our feet, then they're actually potentially harming our feet and putting more stress there than we actually want. So ankles. Ankles have a lot of different ranges of motion. And it's actually a triplanar motion. So they go up and down, they go in, and they go out as well. And they kind of mold in between that as more of a diagonal movement as well. And that's really important for us to note because if we don't have any of those, then we're gonna to try to compensate from it and try to get other places. Angles are inherently stable when they're in a certain position and they're inherently unstable when they're in other positions. And that's where the key determination comes in. You're like, stable ankles? I sprain mine all the dang time. But it's because you're in a certain position of the ankle. If you're in this other position of the ankle, it's really freaking stable. I don't know if you guys are familiar with a peg and mortise. All right, so stability, ankles. So when our foot is pointed down in what's called planar flexion, then our peg and mortise so peg and mortise is that we have our mortise and it slides in, our mortise and it slides in with the peg. And that is inherently stable position. And so if my, if my elbow is my foot, and this is my ankle, whenever I bring my toes up, my peg slides into the mortise and becomes very stable. So when my foot comes up, this is a very stable and you can see if you move your foot, it really doesn't want to move side to side that much here. But if you come down, then it wiggles a whole lot more. And so that is where if it is, if your foot is pointed, it's unstable. If your foot is flexed up, then it is very stable. And that's where if we don't have enough movement when our foot is comes up, that actually plays a role into our knees and our hips. And pretty much everything else with regards to that. But if our foot is down and we don't have stability, then that also can play a role into the rest of our, the rest of our legs and also into our, into our feet. Our feet get affected more so if we don't have enough movement when it comes to bringing our foot up. So we're gonna check on that today. And then we're also going to go over some stability exercises for making sure that you have good control when your foot is down in that planar flex or that pointed toe position. So let's look first at our, our knee and our ankles movement. What you're gonna do, you're gonna put your foot sort of next to the wall and you wanna use some type of arch support for this. And if you go and bring your knee to the wall, you should be about at least eight centimeters, eight or nine centimeters away from the wall with your toes. Now, if your foot goes out to the side and you lose your arch as you go to the wall, that means that you may have some ankle movement, flexibility, mobility issues, meaning that your foot doesn't go up quite as far as you actually need it to. This, this is like one of the biggest things that can affect the rest of your body if you do not have this movement. They did like this huge study with a bunch of military folks and they kind of lined out what, what statistics or what measurements or what different things that happened to the body before base training and after base training if they got injured. Ankle dorsiflexion, that's what this motion's called, that's the, one of the biggest factors that they found that if you have limited motion here, you're more likely to have an injury. This is like thousands of people and thousands of things, like multiple different points that they looked at and it delineated out ankle dorsiflexion movement. Can you believe that? 
I mean, this is a huge movement. So note that you need something underneath, like a towel or something underneath your ankle, or to do it with your shoe on. Keep your heel planted, and then you're trying to touch your knee to the wall. And then you're going to measure the distance between your toe and the wall. And it should be at least eight centimeters. If it's not, then you need to work on it a little bit. Okay? This motion is very important whenever we are riding. If we are getting our heel down in the front, our, our back foot forward, like toe down a little bit, and also whenever we land different drops. And so if we're not able to, to drop down through that, then it's going to affect everybody else up top. So if you know that you have some different ankle issues, try this and see, see if you need to work on it. And definitely look one side compared to the other. And you want to make sure your foot is straight and that you're coming in. My doggy just got here. You can see his little tail. Um, so making sure that you have that, that range of motion because that's where you'll lack range of motion. Is, is in that dorsiflex position. And as I said, it's a pretty big movement. It's a pretty big reason why you need to actually have that movement there. Now, going more into stability, because we definitely need that. As ladies, we're a little bit more flexible. And so we need to make sure that we have stability in these movements. If you think that you need a little bit more stability in your ankle as well, just go ahead and say stability, comment stability down there. And I wanna know who all actually needs a little bit more of this and where it even might be doing another video based on just more stability ankle exercises and how to progress from the ones I'm giving you right now. So the first one is even just doing a calf raise. And this is where you can hang on and use the wall, but you wanna make sure that you're doing this in a specific way. Now, most people when they raise up, if they are a little bit weaker, one, they won't raise their heel up as much, or you'll drift off to your pinky side, your, your pinky toe side. And what I wanna make sure that you guys do is you need to come up centrally. So your weight is both on the big toe side and the pinky side of life. And I want you to give me 25 calf raises. You should be able to do 25 calf raises in a row with weight equal on big toe and pinky side. You should be able to do this with your knee straight because that you have two different, two different muscles that roll into your ankle. And one of them is your soleus and one of them is your gastroc. We're gonna work a soleus muscle exercise next, but the gastroc one is the one I wanna work on now. And you work on that more so whenever your knee is straight. That's why whenever people say like calf stretches, you do one with your with your uh, your leg straight and then one with your leg bent. Now, if going back a little bit, if you have that mobility issue and you feel it this like the tension more so in the back of your ankle, then you need to do calf stretches, just like the one I just showed you on the wall. Simple, nice and effective, one with your with your ankle bent or with your knee bent and one with your knee straight. If you feel it in the front, then you need to basically go through that same movement, that half kneeling movement, and you're gonna rock into and out of that stretch with your, with your, uh, your arch supported. And uh, potentially with your knees and uh, your front foot a little bit closer, so you don't put too much stress on that front knee. Because some people can say that they have a little, bit of, a little bit of stress through that. Okay, I'll show it to you in just a second whenever, I, whenever we go down to the floor. So, but calf raises, making sure you're putting pressure on your big toe side and your pinky toe side, and you should be able to do at least 25 of them. If you can't, that's something that you might need to work on within it. Now, the next one that we're doing, let me show you that half kneeling stretch real quick, and then I'll show you the next, the soleus exercise. So you're gonna be in this half kneeling, and you're just gonna rock forward and back. Nice and easy, making sure your knee tracks over like your second toe and making sure that you don't put your foot out and stress more into your arch. Because if you don't have dorsiflexion range of motion, then you're going to stress your knee and you're going to stress into the arch of your foot. And it's going to cause you to have more foot issues. It also can cause you to have more plantar fasciitis issues. And so this is a huge component 
of plantar fasciitis or other foot issues within it. I think I have a comment. All right, Kira, I'll talk to you later on there. Just head it out. All right, so we have our half kneeling stretch for our ankle dorsiflexion or bringing toes up. We have our stability exercise, our calf raise, putting pressure both equally on the, on the forefoot. And then the last exercise you're gonna be doing is where you're gonna be on your back. And bridges typically are that you're driving through your hips, your core is on, and you're potentially driving through your, through your heels. Well, actually, I want you to come up onto the ball of your foot and you're going to do calf raises through there. And it's going to focus in on the fact that you can be weighted through your toes and still use your glutes. And you should feel it working these areas of your calf. It's like a little bit lower, like the beefy muscle area here, not like the two lovely looking heads of the muscle here. But you're just going to go back up and down with that. You should also feel some glutes and some abs work. And again, making sure that the weight isn't drifting off to the pinky toes. That you're, that you're driving equally from big toe side and pinky side. I hope this makes sense to everybody on the stability and the mobility of the ankle joint. And how whenever it's pointed down it's a whole lot more loosey-goosey and you're much more likely to sprain because your peg and mortise is not there. It's like separated out. And so then you have much more likely to sprain your ankle there. And then making sure as you, as you heal from like a potential sprained ankle, you get that motion back for dorsiflexion as well as stability and control for down there whenever your foot is more in that pointed position. And making sure that you're working both calf muscles back here. Your soleus, which is a little bit lower, and your gastroc, which is the two lovely gastroc heads at the top of the calf. Um, if you found this helpful and are gonna do some of these exercises, go ahead and say calf exercises below. And if you want me to go even a little bit more into it, go ahead and say stability below. And I can do another video updating these guys in a couple weeks to make sure that you guys have the next the next set of ankle things to do. I hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday night and uh, yeah, enjoy it. Bye guys.